If my boss Richard Umbers fails to impress investors at a strategy date to be held on November 1, his days will be numbered. Until now, the spotlight has been on the board as major shareholder Solomon Liu publicly aimed his bullets at directors, promising to vote against their re-election and threatening to pull the trigger on an extraordinary general meeting at some stage in the future. My chief executive Richard Umbers, photo Josh Robinstone but the day of reckoning for executives is coming. On November 1st, Umbers will take center stage to outline the state of its five-year transformation strategy, including targets which are looking very unachievable. Chairman-elect Gary Hounsell and the rest of the board have backed the Myers strategy. If the update doesn't go down well, the company will be staring down the barrel of an EGM and what that might bring. At the very least it means more public embarrassment and more board disruption. Umbers had a dress rehearsal for his strategy day when he jetted off to London on October 12 to speak about global retail at a private function held by former politician Alexander Downer, the High Commissioner for Australia in Britain. Umbers is understood to have said Maya needs to find its relevance in the market. He also said the company's focus was a lot on the millennials. To attract the millennials he talked about implementing barber shops and more food and coffee in store. He also discussed a new buying platform to cater for different body shapes and sizing profiles at Maya Sydney and Maya Melbourne. In other words, body sizes in Sydney are deemed thinner. When probed on whether Umbers was suggesting people in Melbourne are fatter than those in Sydney, a spokesman said the reference was to Asians who have smaller body shapes. To pacify investors he will need to do a lot more than this. He will need to explain why the company HASNT gone the whole hog and written off all of Saspide, instead of only half. He will also need to explain what went wrong at Top Shop, the size of the stockpile of inventory that customers don't want to buy and update its financial targets, which it clearly can no longer meet. These targets include average sales growth of 3% between 2016 and 2020, a target EBITDA growth ahead of sales growth by 2017, which it failed, and target return on funds employed greater than 15% by 2020. Any changes to these targets will need to feed into the long-term incentives for executives. Umbers discussed a new buying platform to cater for different body shapes and sizing profiles at Maya Sydney and Maya Melbourne. In other words, body sizes in Sydney are deemed thinner. Importantly he will need to explain how Maya plans to offer products customers want to buy. This requires outlining a clear strategy and a commitment to building an executive team with strong retail experience instead of relying on consultants. But it ISNT all on numbers. He would be greatly helped if he had a board with strong retail experience, instead of one at war with a key shareholder. This does nothing to help the company. On Tuesday, Liu who holds 10.8% of Maya, issued a statement that he had no current intention of making a takeover offer for Maya. He said he had met with Hounsell on October 6 and asked for two board seats, as well as the appointment of a further independent director, but his requests had been declined. Mr Hounsell then inferred to the media that he was yet to meet with Mr Liu, and publicly backed the new Maya strategy against all of the evidence that it is not working, the statement said. Six days later, Mr. Hounsell announced that he was proposing to shareholders that they should appoint Julianne Morrison to the board. Ms. Morrison has been a company director of the failed Saspide business for 21 months. It is hard to fathom how the Maya board allowed a war to erupt with Lou. He is a major shareholder, has watched the value of his shares plunge and wants some representation on the board. There's nothing unusual in that. The My Board needs to explain why it has so badly handled the situation and offer a better explanation than the board rebuffers due to conflicts of interests associated with Lou being a big supplier to Maya. There's such a thing as related party protocols to consider. At the end of the day, if strategy day is a bust it will turn into an ugly annual meeting and an even uglier EGM come next year.